concrete. Carolyn wants to have $150,000 saved when she retires in 15 years. How much would she need to save each month, beginning at the end of the first month, so that makes it the ordinary simple annuity, uh, to, re to reach her goal if she can invest in an account that pays 6% compounded monthly. Again, the compounding period matches the payment period and it is at the end of each month. So let's figure out what we have here. The, uh, how much would she need to save each month? That's what we're trying to figure out here. And we have the future value. We want to have $150,000 at the end of the time frame. The I value, uh, the interest rate is 0 0.06 per year, and it's compounding monthly. So we have to divide that into 12 equal parts, which will be 0 0.005. As far as the number of times it's going to compound, it's compounding every month, so that's 12 times a year for 15 years. So we're gonna have 15 groups of 12, and we can figure that out. 15 times 12, or 12 times 15, is 180 compounding periods. It's 180 payments. So now we're ready to fill in what we know in our uh, annuity formula here. So we have our one plus i to the n, minus one all over I. So fill in what we know. We know the 150,000 is our future value. The R we don't know. Um, in our bracket here, we're gonna have 1.005. So I just did the adding part with that. 180 is our exponent. Then we subtract one from that answer and that gets divided by uh, 0 0.005. So to get R by itself, the first thing we want to do is multiply both sides by 0 0.005 to get rid of it on the bottom here. So this gets multiplied by 0 0.005. So that undoes that. And 150,000 times 0 0.005 gives us 750. So 750 is equal to the R times this stuff. And again, I'm gonna leave that written in this format. I'm not gonna actually take it to a decimal because I don't want to end up with a rounding error. The R is being multiplied by that stuff in the bracket. So I'm gonna divide both sides by the stuff in the bracket. And then I divide this side by the same amount, 1.005 to the exponent of 180, subtract one. All right, so 750 divided by bracket, 1.005 to the exponent 180, subtract one bracket equals. So I get 515.79 is what that's going to round to. So that's the regular payment amount she needs to make monthly payments of $515.79 to be able to meet her goal. All right, now it's sometimes possible uh, that you might need to figure out how much to invest right now. Um, uh, or uh, what you can work with to work backwards. What did you start with? given that um, you're gonna need this much. This is your future value. So we've got an example here. Henry estimates that he will need $5,000 each of four years. So that actually is the regular payment he wants to receive every year for four years to cover his tuition for school one year from now. So he wants to start paying himself one year from now. So that's at the end of the first year, end of the second year, end of the third year, end of the fourth year. His account pays this percent compounded annually, how much does he need to put in that account right now so it can sit there, earn interest, and then he's going to make withdrawals from that, um, that account. So that is a present value question. We want to know the present value when the regular payment is going to end up being $5,000. The I value is 0 0.09 divided by just 1, which is 0 0.09, and the N, it's going to compound one year from now for each of four years. So it's gonna compound four times here. So we're really calculating how much needs to be in the account presently so that we can withdraw 5,000 four times starting at the end of this year. So our regular withdrawal is $5,000. 
1 plus 0 0.09 is just 1.09. And that's now going to be to the negative 4. So we're working backwards. You'll notice the roles have kind of switched here. Instead of having your 1 plus i first, it comes second in the bracket, and now your exponent is actually a negative. So it's that working backwards piece that we're getting in here. Now we're just going to put that into the, the calculator. I want you to think about this for a minute, though. If we made five, four payments of $5,000 and we didn't have any chance to earn any interest on that, we would need $20,000. But because that money is sitting in the account, we should need less than $20,000 because it has time to grow um, with the interest amount. So I'm going to do one. I'm going to do inside the bracket first here. One take away 1.09 to the exponent negative 4, so that gives me 0 0.291574, blah, 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 and times that by 5,000, and then divide that amount by 0 0.09, and I need 16,198.60, or Henry does, I should say, it's not me, it's Henry. So as long as he has that much in his account, and he continues to earn 9% per annum, compounded uh, annually, then he will have enough money to give himself $5,000 uh, each of four years over the next four years. All right, let's continue on here. Thelma buys a television for $2,000. She finances it on a store credit card at 29% per annum, compounded monthly. She plans to pay the loan off in one year. How much should her monthly payment be? So we're trying to fi figure out the R amount. What should her regular payment be? Um, currently, that, that uh, television is $2,000. That's the present value of the television without any interest tacked onto it. The I value, the interest, will be 0 0.29, but it's compounding monthly. And the N, we are making uh, one year's worth of payments. It's going to compound every month for one year. The N is 12. So our present value is the 2000 and our formula looks like this for present value. So let's fill in what we know and see if we can solve that. And then after you get that, you can figure out how much interest she's actually being charged for that television. How much extra is she paying is what the interest is. Okay, so our present value is $2,000 here. Our regular payment is what we're going to solve for. We are going to have 1 plus 0 0.29 divided by 12, all to the exponent of 12, negative 12. And that is going to get divided by 0 0.29 divided by 12. Okay, so to solve for the R, the first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 0 0.29 divided by 12. It's being divided by it. So we're going to multiply both sides by that. So the 2,000 over here also needs to get multiplied by 0 0.29 divided by 12. So I'm going to do that in my calculator, 0 0.29 divided by 12 times by 2,000. And it gives me lots of decimal places, but thankfully it's a repeating one, so I can write that all down. I would just keep all those digits on my calculator, though. Keep that 48.33 repeating on your calculator. And then... We're going to divide out what's in the square bracket. Okay, we're going to divide both sides by this amount in the square bracket here. So we have, ooh, I'm running out of room. R would be equal to the 48.3 repeating being divided by 1 take away 1 plus 0 0.29 over 12 to the exponent negative 12. And we'll see what we get there. All right, and when I did that, I get 193.99. So our monthly payment should be $193.99. How much interest is she charged? Well, to figure out how much interest she's being charged, um, she's making 12 payments of the 193.99. So this is how much money she's actually paying for the television. So I'm going to take that answer on my calculator, times it by 12. I might have a rounding thing here, uh, just given that I used all the decimal places. 
she's actually paying about $2,327.90. The interest then would be the $2,327.90 uh, minus the $2,000. So she is paying an extra $327.90 for that television.